In this video, we're going to introduce the notion of parametric equations, and we're going to talk about why they're actually important. So first, consider this example. Say we have x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So this is the equation of a circle centered at the origin with radius r. So if you were to graph this equation, you would start at the origin, and you would go up a distance of r, right a distance of r, down and left, and then you would connect the dots and make a circle. And here the radius would be r. So let's say you wanted to find an explicit formula in terms of x or in terms of y for the circle. So we could do two things. We could solve for y squared by subtracting x squared. That would give us r squared minus x squared. Or we could solve for x squared by subtracting y squared. That would give us r squared minus y squared. But we still wouldn't be where we want to be. We still wouldn't have y or x. So if we look here on the left, we could solve for y by taking the square root of both sides. However, when we do that, we end up getting a plus or a minus. We get y equals the square root of r squared minus x squared. And the other solution is y equals minus the square root of r squared minus x squared. This first one represents the top half of the circle. So this one equation would give you the entire top half of your circle. And you guessed it, maybe the second equation would give you the bottom half of the circle. Well, what about over here? If we do the same thing here and we take the square root, we would get x equals, well, again, we would get two answers. One answer would be the square root of r squared minus y squared. And the other answer would be x equals minus the square root of r squared minus y squared. This first equation would be the right half of the circle. And the second equation would be the left half. So it's ridiculous. Right? So to describe this one equation explicitly in terms of y or in terms of x requires four different equations. I mean, up to, up to four to describe just a basic circle. So in order to deal with this in mathematics, we introduced something that's a little bit easier to work with. We introduced the notion of what's called parametric equations. So parametric equations allow us to describe graphs in a much more convenient way most of the time. So to deal with this, we introduce what's called parametric equations. And so here's an example. We can let x be a function of time, and we can let y be a function of time. And these are called parametric equations. So these are parametric equations. T here has a name. T is called the parameter. So parameter. Sometimes you use theta or you use uh, another letter. So each T, so each value of T gives an ordered pair, gives us x, y. But x, y is equal to f of t, g of t. So each value of t will give us uh, a little uh, point on the graph. Let's do a really simple example of some parametric equations. And let's try to stay in line with what we were talking about. Let's maybe do this example here. Say we have um, x equals, I don't know, um, cosine t. Let's make it really simple and y equals sine t. So these are parametric equations and let's do the following. Let's take these parametric equations and write them in rectangular form. So we're going to write them in what's called rectangular form. And let's also sketch the parametric equations. And we're also going to do something called indicate the orientation. The orientation is the direction in which the graph is traced. So normally, if you just have a rectangular equation, there is no orientation. 
but for parametric equations, uh, there's a way to find it, and I'll show you now. So solution. So first, let's put these in rectangular form. So whenever you have uh, trig functions like this, like a cosine and a sine, the trick is to solve for the trig functions and then use an identity. So we've already solved for them. We have cosine of x, cosine of t equals x, sine of t equals y. So we'll start by writing down this identity. Cosine squared plus sine squared is equal to 1. That's an identity we know uh, from trig. And now we simply replace cosine with x. So this is x squared plus, and then sine is y, so this is y squared, and that's equal to 1. So that's it. That's the rectangular equation. So you see this is a circle. This is a circle, and the radius is 1. So this circle can be easily described by these parametric equations. If you're curious, a circle of radius r would be described by these equations. So our circle in the previous example can be easily represented by these two parametric equations instead of using all four of these like ridiculous things, you know. So parametric equations are huge. You know, you can describe all kinds of graphs with parametric equations. Circles, ellipses, lines, parabolas, hyperbolas etc. So this will always give you a circle of radius r centered at the origin. Okay, so we have our rectangular equation. Now we're going to graph it. So this is just the unit circle. Let's do the graph. So you just go up one, down one, left one, right one, and then just connect the dots and you make a circle. So now we're going to indicate what's called the orientation. So to find the orientation, you always want to plot values of t in increasing order. I'm going to write that down. So to find orientation, this always works. This is extremely important. So plot values of t in increasing order, always. Okay, this is super key. So to find the orientation, do that. So let's find the orientation in this example here. I'm going to come up so I can see my x and y. I'll do a little table here. So we have t, x, and y. So whenever you have like a circular object, like an ellipse or a circle, you want to use three values because um, you want to make sure that you're going the right way. Because remember, it's a circle, so if I start here and I end up down here, did I go left or did I, or did I go right? So you need a third point to indicate that. If you have like a line, two points is enough. Let's pick some nice numbers. How about 0, pi over 2, and pi? Notice they're in increasing order, just like it says here, right, in increasing order. Then you take these and you plug them into your actual parametric equations. So let's see. So when, when t is 0, we would get x equals cosine of 0. Well, that's just 1. So here we're at 1. And then y equals sine of 0. Well, the sine of 0 is 0, so we're at 0. So when t is 0, we're at this point here, 1 comma 0. So this point corresponds to t equals 0. So you can think of it as our starting point. So that's where we're starting, at that point. If you plug in uh, pi over 2, you would get x equals the cosine of pi over 2, which is 0. So we're at 0. And the sine of pi over 2, if you plug it into y, you would get um, 1. So that's 1. So now we're up here. So t equals pi over 2 corresponds to this point here. You might say, oh, it's just like the unit circle. It is. Uh, will it always be that way? No. <laughs> no, it will not. And I'll explain uh, a situation where it won't be in a minute. And the last one is pi. So if you plug in pi into your cosine, you get cosine of pi, which is, which is negative 1 and then sine of pi, which is, which is 0. So now we're here. So this corresponds to t equals pi. So you see we're starting here at 0 to pi over 2 to pi. So it looks like we're going um, counterclockwise. So now we've indicated the orientation, and that's a perfect graph. And that's it. That would be a complete sketch. I mentioned that it's not always going to follow the unit circle. Here's an example. Let's say we take cosine 2t, y equals sine 2t. This will also give us the unit circle, except the 2 
actually means that it's traced out twice as fast. It's really cool. So by putting a two there, it's traced out twice as fast. To trace out the entire unit circle in this problem, t needs to vary from zero to two pi. As you can tell, from zero to pi, we're halfway there. Pi to two pi should give us the other half. But if we used these parametric equations, t would only need to vary from zero to pi because of the two. So therefore, the unit circle is traced out twice as fast when you put a number there. Just some extra uh, knowledge. You study parametric equations in so many classes and so many math classes. And you know parametric equations are considered one of the most important things in all of math. Because you can talk to anybody about what a graph is. You know, you can talk to a chemist, a physicist, an engineer. Everyone understands what this is. This is a path. You're trying to get from here to here. And you can describe paths using parametric equations, right? As time passes, you get, you're at a different point. Each value of time, when time passes, you travel along the curve. That's what's happening down here with the circle, right? As time passes, we're traveling along this circle. You can also do parametric equations in three-dimensional space. So if you have an x, y, and a z, as time passes, you can model like a flying saucer in space, uh, in theory, <laughs> using parametric equations. Anyways, the video is a bit long. I hope this video has been helpful in some way. Good luck.